Hey guys, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today, uh, in conjunction with Special Tech, I'm going to be trying to show you how you can water cool a uh, Fortress FTO2 or uh, the RVO2, the Raven, obviously from uh, Silverstone. Now, when I originally reviewed uh, both the Fortress and the Raven, um, I said that you couldn't water cool them. Um, and for the most part of it, you can't because uh, for the average user or 99% of the people that are actually going to buy these cases, their version of can I water cool it is are all the screw holes there, can I just take my radiator, plonk it in the bottom and that be it over and done with. Um, and still to this day the answer is no. But thanks to a company called Magical who have uh, recently started releasing uh, 180 mil. Uh, radiators uh, it's made things a little easier for us. Now in the bottom of the Fortress and the Raven there are 380 millimeter fans. Uh, the, uh, the Magical Rads are made for 180 mil fans and they do a single one, they do a double and they also do a rather monstrous triple as well. Now these are big big radiators, they're quite slim, they're only 35 mil thick um, but they're big old radiators. Now what we're going to do, because there's, uh, there's two ways that you can, you can go about uh, this, and we're, we're technically gonna get, show you the more difficult version. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the, change the, bring the camera in, change the camera, bring the camera in and start to explain a few things before we uh, start attacking this. Because like I said, there's a couple of ways that you can go about it. Um, the easier way, there's no need for me to explain to you, so we're going to take the more difficult avenue and show you that way. Um, but yeah, it's time for me to bring the camera in and uh, actually start explaining what we're going to be doing today. Right then guys, just going to try and explain to you the two different ways. Now, to start off with, the easy way is to literally remove all these brackets in the bottom, um, including all the fans, literally take everything out, Plonk the fans onto your radiator, however which way you want, and then just put the radiator in the bottom. And it will, as long as you've removed everything, it will fit. But the problem with doing that, it then means that you lose one of the best features of the case, which are these sliding dust filters that go in the bottom. And they do work really well. It's one of the reasons why I've always really liked this case. Um, this case has actually been used for probably the best part of eight months and the, he uh, hoovers the dust filters, he says every couple of weeks, but I'd hazard a guess at once a month at very best. And although there is some residual dust on the fans, when we took the case apart earlier, it really was quite, you know, considering the amount of time it's been used, it was very clean. Now, if we were to, as we would like to now, because we, we could just stick the radiator on top of these fans. But there's no way for us to be able to fix the fans to the radiator because the fans actually sit ever so slightly further back in the case. So it means that we can't get you know there to be able to latch the fans on. So what we're gonna have to do, if you have a look carefully, I've marked out these dotted lines. It's it's a bit Ralph Harris, it's not very clean at the moment, but it was just to show you guys where I want to cut and it's basically there's some uh, zip tie clamps and basically what I want to do is cut along these zip tie clamps hole right the way across and then at the bottom of uh, this bit here we'll remove all of that and there's a, a, a clamp here as well behind the fans we'll remove all of that as well now you may be wondering you know why we go to all the effort of cutting this case if we can just chuck it in well a it's those dust filters but b also I've undone the screws already well, what we're going to do is essentially we're going to screw the radiator straight to the fans and then we're actually even going to use the case mounting system and we'll be able to slide all of the fan and all the radiators all in in one place and then all we've got to do is put two screws in on each of the fans and that's it it will be fixed and done in place so it's essentially we make a few cuts it's a, literally like a 10 minute job with a dremel and then we can actually keep the bottom of the case, keep all the bottom mounts in the case. Now, if you wanted to use the, uh, the massive triple fan radiator, which would go right the way along, you can do exactly the same thing, but all you need to do is get your drill out and undrill the rivets for the hard drive cage. 
Now I can instantly hear you going, oh my God, but why do I want to take my hard drive cage out? Well, the easiest way to do it is then to mount your hard drives in the optical bays. You can get some damper kits. Uh, you can normally get at least two per optical bay and I would put them up there. To be perfectly honest with you, I'd much rather do that and have a lovely, great big radiator in the bottom. But what we're going to do is, we're going to, like I said, we're going to take the, uh, we're going to do the, the dual rad today, which is easily ample for a, a tremendous overclock on your CPU. And we're also, at the end product, we're going to show you it with a, uh, with a motherboard loop as well. We're not going to do your GPU. Now, one thing I do have to stress, if you are going to do it this way, with the radiator on top of the fans, maximum distance for, for uh, sorry, maximum length for your graphics cards will be 280 millimeters. And at that point, it will be quite tight to get your graphics card in and out, but it can be done. I've done it, I've, we've been you know, measuring up and trying this out today. So 280 mil this way. If you remove all the bottom in the fan and just do the cheap way and dump the radiator in the bottom with the fans on and then work out some way of putting the dust filters underneath whether you tape them on use magnets or whatever you then gain 20 millimeters so then you can uh, have a maximum gpu length of 300 millimeters so be very specific about that make sure you write that down go and do some research about your graphics card there's in, in, you don't need to ask me whether yours will fit don't be a spastic, I don't care. You, um, you can literally, the, the information's all over the internet. If you can't use Google, you shouldn't be watching this video in the first place. Um, so right, basically, what I'm going to do now is, like I said, I'm going to go and uh, you can see the lines that I've made for uh, the cuts. And all we need to do is a couple of cuts um, underneath the, um, at the bottom. It's very self-explanatory. So I'm going to go and whiz that off now, and you'll come back when we've done this. Right then, peeps, I thought I'd better show you what you need to do at the back, because otherwise I'll be flooded with questions from people that probably will never buy the case in the first place. But anyway, basically, all we need to do at the back is cut along that line there. We don't need to cut too far down, because this isn't the problem. It's this line here. So we'll just go at the top you know, by the fan, we can go along the fan line. As long as it's a little bit below, we'll be fine. You can see that angle there. Well, that's all we need to cut away from that side and then cut that straight down through. And then on this side, again, we just go through the top of the fan because we're going to be cutting right the way along here anyway. So essentially, I know this is going to look messy, but it doesn't matter because this is just to show you. Basically, all of this is what we're removing. Now I know the line's not straight, it doesn't matter, but it's just so I can colour it in and show you the material that's going to be going. So this, all of this material is going to be gone. So that's what we're removing and like I said that is literally just so that we can slide the, uh, the case in. Now I need to do this bit first um, and then once we've got the uh, the fan slid in, we may may have to make a slight tweak at this end as well to be able to get the um, radiator in. I don't know whether the the radiator is going to clash with this yet. And until we actually um, get it in there, I can't say. So we may have to make another small nick at this end. Uh, but like I said, until we um, actually get in there and start chopping bits about, I can't really say. So uh, I'm going to strip all the fans out the bottom of the case now. Go and make this cut. Uh, if I have to cut this end, I will do that before I come back. Right then, people. This is literally fresh from the cutting. As you can see, we've still got cutting stuff all over the place. It's all... Yeah, anyway, right. Essentially... I need to work out which way around this would have been there. I'm pretty, there we go. It would have been like that. But what I've done is I've cut an extra bit off down the bottom and I've also cut further along on this side. We've cut further up there. Now, now what I need to do is normal kind of maintenance with the, well, normal kind of procedure when you've done your Dremlin. I'm now gonna, gotta file all the edges and sand it all down, um, clean it all up, get it all looking pretty. But the whole idea now is we've got room for the radiator 
it should slide in the, in the standard slots. But what I'm going to do now, I just wanted to show you uh, kind of the carnage before, because if I zoom you in, you can see the cuts. So what I need to do now is uh, get the file out, get this looking pretty, and then we'll get the bottom back in, and I will show you what the radiator will look like um, once it's nestled in the bottom of the case. Right then, peeps. Starting to get it all in there now, and as you can see, this is tighter than a nun's watsits. But the most important thing that we need to kind of stress is we've still got full use of the dust filters. In and out, nice and easy. All three, but obviously these two are the, the most important ones. We've still got a little bit of work to do. We still need to uh, finish hosing up, get the power supply in and everything. But what we've done is we've got the radiator in. We've got two SATA cables in at the back. We've got the PCI Express cables in and the uh, 24 pin in. And obviously we've had to work all this in real slowly and take our time to make sure it's all really tidy. If you're looking to do this for yourself, it's really not a job that you're going to be able to rush or just throw bits at. The motherboard has been in and out three or four times just to make sure everything's gone in and worked properly. As we've uh, said to you before, 200 and uh, 18mm maximum length for your graphics card. There is a tiny little bit at the bottom, but I honestly, do you know what I mean? I can get my finger there, but you're going to need that extra little bit so that you can get the card in, which is the most crucial thing. If you've got a longer card, you're going to have to take the easy option and just, you know, not have the um, uh, fan filters inside, but it is so tight in there. It does fit, but it's just ridiculously tight. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're, uh, we're going to finish off, uh, carry on getting the, you know, putting the hardware in there, carry on. Uh, we didn't actually get round to touching any of the painting underneath this, but by the time we'd uh, fitted the motherboard in, where the rampage is E80X, it's actually cut, covered up most of the cuts. So the little bit here that's exposed and the little bit here that's exposed we'll be able to do uh, in a minute. Um, I'll have to admit, when we once we started putting the board in and out, it's completely slipped my mind, but we'll cover up the bits that you can see in a minute. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're slowly getting there. Uh, so now it's time, like I said, we've got to need to put the power supply in there, and then it's putting the reservoir in the front, and uh, running the last couple of bits of hose, because basically this hose is going to come up here, this hose is going to go back to the reservoir, and then we're going to have the pump X um, outside coming out and then coming down into here. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we should be done fairly soon. So stay tuned. Right then, peeps, we finished assembling the case. Now, these loops may seem slightly long to you, and that's uh, perfectly right, but that's because we need to be able to move the reservoir in and out, so we need a little bit longer a loop on it. We can clip them up and make them all tidy once it's all in there, so that's not too much of a problem. We've also, at the moment, not got the power supply in there, because when we do our leak testing, we do it with the power supply external, and there's no power to any of the parts or anything in there. Always make sure that when you're doing your leak testing that you keep plenty of uh, kitchen towel lying around, and I'm going to scatter it around all over the place, because it'll help give me an optical indication of the, uh, the leaks. Um, but as far as uh, the build is concerned, that is it. So what I need to do now is uh, get the uh, get some coolant in there, uh, let it run for a bit and give it a good old go. But this is the final time you're going to see it in bits. The next section of the video will be uh, when it's all together um, and it will be, uh, I'll give you a look around it and then I'll also show you the performance side of things as well. But as far as the, uh, I suppose, you know, like the final bit of the build's concerned, this is it for you lot. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to see the final product. Right then peeps, on to the uh, finished rig. Just wanted to give you a quick look of it uh, with the side and everything on. The door isn't fixed in place, I just wanted to show you it with the window on and how we've gone with it. Um, I know instantly, while I uh, try and get the roof up, there's uh, going to be a, a few of you out there saying, oh, that long hose, there really isn't anything I can do about this. Uh, and don't bother saying, oh, you could have done this, you could have done that. No, I couldn't. This is the tidiest way we could get it. Um, 
And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm actually quite happy with it like this as well. Because I couldn't turn the radiator around, there was nothing I could do about this. But also, if I'd have turned the radiator around, yes, this hose would have been shorter. But it would have meant that uh, the other hose, which is here, uh, was so close to the motherboard, it was ridiculous. And uh, what we need to remember is that the motherboard, we needed it to go over there. So we would have ended up with a long hose somewhere anyway. So I went with it this way, and uh, I'm actually really happy with it. Um, now, uh, obviously we need to say at the end, where it's the end of the video, a massive thanks to Special Tech for making all this possible. I don't want that to sound like they sponsored it or anything like that, but it was more the fact that I've wanted to do, or I wanted to get a look at one of these 180mm radiators for a while, because I obviously, when I did uh, the original review of this case, said it wasn't water -cleanable because it, to me, it really, it, it wasn't. But now what I've kind of been able to show you is we've basically been able to take the best parts of this, the Raven design, so the upflow design, the 180mm fans, the dust filtering, and we've now managed to couple that with the benefits of water cooling. Um, so obviously uh, lower temperatures, higher um, overheads for overclocking, aesthetics. Um, and although it did take us a little while, we've had to get the Dremel out on it, we've had to take a bit of time, and we've, uh, it really did take a fair bit of thought to be able to get it all in there and all tidy. Uh, I really do like the look of this. Um, obviously, as I've kept saying, we've gone about this the hard way, so we've kept everything in the bottom. If you wanted to go the easy way, find some way of taking your dust filters and fitting them underneath, you could have uh, just dropped the radiator in the floor and you'd be away. Um, but I really wanted to do it this way to try and, like I said, keep those uh, bits about the case that make this unique and make it such a good case in the first place. Right, you know, to kind of um, build on what's already great about it rather than you know taking it and you know making it not as good. Um, so yeah, temperatures with this are pretty good actually. What we got to bear in mind is your CPU is always going to be the hottest part of your rig. Always has been, always will be. Doesn't matter how big you would have made the radiator. But I was really um, impressed with this because at 1.4 volts we had we've got the 990X uh, running at 4.6 gigahertz and it's maxing out about 62 degrees. Um, that's absolutely flat taps, uh, and that's with the fans on low because that's another thing that we're by keeping these fans in the case is that we've managed to keep the inbuilt fan controller as well. And there's a uh, three switches in the roof, one for each of the fans, and that's with the fans on low. All you need to do is uh, flick the uh, switches over and then you get um, that on high. Uh, and obviously if we'd have changed the fans or you know messed about with it too much, we wouldn't have been able to have done that. Um, and obviously these are the Silverstone air penetrators as well. And these are epic uh, 180 fans. Really, really good. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm quite, I could really quite like this actually. I'm glad I went with the black fans rather than the white fans. Um, yeah, because I, I, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm quite like the way the radiator is here, uh, and it also kind of breaks up a little bit. The blue, uh, yeah, I quite like the blue. I almost went with clear coolant, but I went with blue right at the very last minute, and I'm kind of glad I did. The only thing that the, um, it's daytime at the moment, so I can't show you, but there are lights in the case as well, so the, the reservoir at the front lights up, and there's, you know, sort of like a ring of lights around the outside, so at night it does really look the part as well. Um, so yes, what do you think? Uh, I quite like it actually. And something I will say as well is uh, that some of you will be uh, saying, oh, do you know what I mean? You're using the, the hot air from the radiator blowing up into the graphics card. Um, it's actually made uh, one degrees difference on the graphics card, which you could just say is a margin of error. Um, so it's not really added any heat to the graphics card temperatures whatsoever. Um, so yeah. I'm quite happy with it. What do you think, Straubs? You're going to have to shout. I love it. Straubs likes it. That's about as good as you're going to get as well. Um, as in, as a response from him. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. A uh, uh, weekend of madness. I need my head testing. Uh, on to the next one now. What shall we do next? But anyway, uh, this is Tiny Tom Logan, and obviously, uh, thanks to the boys at Special Tech, with another video for you. Out.